beautiful people, it's Ash, your truth bombing fairy godmother for everything love, dating and relationships. A couple of things before we get started today. One, I am so incredibly sick, you can probably hear it a bit in my voice. I've got the nastiest head cold and now it's kind of moved into my chest a little bit so I'm really not feeling like myself so if I seem a bit low energy or a bit out of it, that's why. Second thing, and I was really not even going to film today because I'm feeling, I know it's stupid, I'm feeling that insecure and just not myself other than the fact that I'm sick because about three days ago now I got all of my lip fillers dissolved. I know, I know, first world problems, but I'm just being honest and I think... It's important to be open about these things because I know a lot of women do like indulging in a bit of Botox and fillers but feel like they need to lie about it because there's shame associated with it, which I just don't understand why. I've had lip fillers in for about five years and I love them. I feel way more confident, way more my, myself, if that's even possible. And right now, like <laughs> looking at my face, I to you it may not be that big of a difference but to me it's massive and i feel like an alien i actually don't feel like myself but every couple of years especially when you've had filler so consistently you're kind of meant to dissolve it and start fresh because it migrates and starts looking a little bit not cute <laughs> that shit stopped looking cute so i got it all dissolved and in the next couple of weeks we'll get my lips refilled again and we'll be just kind of starting with a blank canvas but I know it's silly, just saying how it is. I hate when people lie about fillers and yeah, you'll probably notice my face change again in another couple of weeks. So I just wanted to, you know, just little disclaimer. So without any further delay, let's jump into today's topic. I'm just gonna keep riding the train of abusive reality TV show relationships. We're gonna stray away from maths for a little while and I'm thankful for that because today's topic I feel like is way less controversial than the previous videos I did on the maths relationship between Tash and Amanda because with this particular situation which is between Victoria Fuller and Peter Weber on The Bachelor US, not the Australian one but The Bachelor US, is very clearly one-sided. I just, I really can't see how anyone could be defending Victoria in this situation. Hopefully this will be controversy free, but let's just, let's see. You never know. So using Victoria F and Peter Weber's on-screen relationship, we are going to be covering five components of toxic relationships. But first, before we get into it, as always, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It honestly does make a massive difference difference. Giving videos likes and commenting and interacting really really does help someone's YouTube channel so if you like what you see today please give it a thumbs up and of course don't forget to subscribe. Also click that little notification bell below because that will alert you every single time I post and I put a new video out every single week. Okay let's get into it. All right so right now in The Bachelor US Peter Weber is down to his final three women and one of the women, Victoria F, is so problematic in so many ways. And to us as viewers watching her and watching their dynamic, it is so frustrating. It's so frustrating to watch because it's so blatantly obvious that this relationship it just has chaos and toxicity written all over it but i understand when you're the person enmeshed in that it's really really hard to see things clearly let's get into the five components of a toxic relationship that i was able to identify using their dynamic with one another the first one is using words like crazy to describe your dynamic with one another and more importantly confusing that craziness with passion. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people use the adjective crazy to describe their relationships as if that's somehow a positive thing. Extreme emotional highs and lows within your relationships are not a good thing. That shit's not fun, it's not cute, it's not passionate, although I can see how it's easy to confuse it with that and we will jump into that in a second. It's certainly not sustainable 
and it generally just gets progressively worse in time. So many people seem to associate these big emotional peaks and troughs with passion. Oh, we're just passionate. No, that is not passion. There was a scene in the last episode on their hometown date when Peter's singing this song lyric to Victoria and I think the exact song line was, I don't want easy, I just want crazy. And she kind of looks at him with this little, you know, whiny baby voice and she's like, are you sure? And me, are you sure? If that scene alone wasn't the perfect summary of their dynamic with one another, not easy. So he doesn't want easy, he wants difficult, opposite of easy, he wants difficult and crazy. Don't get me wrong, relationships aren't easy. They, they are difficult at times and they absolutely take a lot of work and effort to sustain, but not this type of work. This constant push-pull dynamic and getting caught in this cycle of arguing and making up and arguing and making up that Peter and Victoria have literally done in every single interaction that they have had with one another is not healthy. It's extremely immature, but it's also very addicting and this is where things get scary. If you've ever been in a high drama relationship before, it sort of becomes this drug, right? You have these massive blow ups and your emotions are heightened and your adrenaline is high and you're frustrated and then you have these, you know, wild, passionate, kiss and make up type moments. This is where the whole, you know, make up sex phrase I think comes from. And you get so entrenched in these, in this, this cycle of high, 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 you know, angry emotion, frustrated adrenaline, and then these passionate makeup sessions. And then things kind of die down and become a little bit dull. And then it picks up again and the cycle just repeats and repeats and you get very addicted to that. It really is like a drug. You learn to kind of crave these cycles because when these big emotional peaks and troughs aren't happening, you feel bored and, and people who do become very attached to these high drama relationships, they would find that they would have trouble being in a more healthy, balanced, more consistent relationship because they would very much feel bored. This dynamic becomes a major way of distracting us from ourselves, our other problems in life. It really does act as this all-consuming distraction and because of that we become to rely on it. Peter makes an actual comment in the last episode, oh well at least I know a life with Victoria F wouldn't be boring. If that's the benchmark you're using to decide whether or not a relationship is good for you, you're already f***ed. You're, you're grasping at straws. I hate to break it to you, but real healthy love can be a bit boring and monotonous sometimes because you're not dealing with drama. You're not on this emotional roller coaster that at times can feel really exhilarating but also very, very draining. So if you're using language like, we're crazy, but we're passionate, and that passion is associated with fights and arguments and making up and just drama, then no, that shit is not passion. It's just stupid and it's a huge waste of time. Second on the list is emotional insecurity or not really knowing where you stand with the other person. Being in a constant state of confusion and more often than not, not really knowing where you stand with your partner is not okay. Peter has said multiple times that he feels very confused by Victoria's behavior and he feels really uneasy and on edge about investing in a relationship with someone who is so hot and cold all the time. But he even says to her at one point, I feel like you don't even want me to love you. I feel so confused. If that doesn't tell you enough in itself, Peter, come on. 
You should never be left to question where you stand with your partner. In both of my previous relationships before my now fiance, I was always left to question where things stood. How important was I to them? And hey, if, if you're wondering this about your partner, then chances are you're not very important to them. And this is another dynamic that is very addicting because it creates a bit of a chase, right? And because I never felt fully comfortable and secure in my relationship or where I stood with my partner, although that felt really horrible, it also kept me on my toes, which is a bit exciting, right? To, to be left wondering, you know, will he, won't, won't he? That's a exciting experience to some degree. Sure, maybe at the beginning stages of a courtship or getting to know someone, that kind of wondering is fun and stimulating and, and somewhat harmless, but if you're actually in a relationship with someone or have been with them for a decent amount of time and you're still wondering these things, then I think that's a, a red flag. Number three is lack of emotional availability and a lack of true vulnerability by the other person. We have not seen Victoria display any real vulnerability. We've seen a lot of tears, a lot of emotional outbursts, but those displays should not be confused for genuine emotional vulnerability, and I'll explain what I mean. When Peter comes to Victoria upset, she always seems to flip the narrative, right? She's never actually there to comfort him. She always seems to turn those moments around and make it all about her. And this is what I mean when I say lack of emotional availability. She's never actually consoled Peter or been present for him emotionally when he's needed her. In fact, she does quite the opposite. She makes it not only all about herself, but she attacks him, right? She calls him moody. She doesn't remain present with him when, he, when he's struggling. It's clear she has no real interest in being that rock for him or that soft place for him to fall. Your partner should be those things for you. They should be that soft place to fall when you're feeling down. Peter has said himself that he hasn't really felt her fight for him or their relationship once. Why on earth would you want to be with someone that you feel isn't willing to fight for you? Every interaction between the two of them has has been spent trying to talk her down a ledge, right? He's always giving so much of himself emotionally during every sing single interaction, but we have not seen her do the same for him at all. She wants Peter to be constantly chasing after her, giving her whatever reassurance she needs and is never willing to do the same for him. And she also does not have any regard for how her emotional volatility really depletes him. And in terms of the vulnerability aspect, when we compare Peter and Victoria's dynamic between his and Kelsey's dynamic, which of course, Kelsey's the one that he's just sent home, but anyway, when we compare the two interactions, we've seen a lot of genuine vulnerability between him and Kelsey. He has listened to Kelsey open up about her family struggles and her parents' divorce and a lot of real life issues that have shaped her to become the woman that she is today. And in turn, Peter has done the same. I think on their very first date together, she was opening up, she was very emotional and he did the exact same thing, right? And she was the listening ear. He spoke about how his um, mom and grandmother struggled when they first came to the US from Cuba and how that's impacted him as a man. And it was this really beautiful open exchange where they each showed such raw, honest, emotional parts of themselves and their life stories and they each took turns really listening and being that support system for the other person. That's real vulnerability. We haven't seen any of that with Victoria, right? We've just seen a lot of tears and a lot of tantrum throwing, which is not the same as real emotional availability and vulnerability. Number four, and I think this is the biggest one on the list, 
having absolutely no ability to successfully talk through and resolve conflict. In other words, no communication skills. Peter even said himself in the last episode that they have no ability to communicate and truly understand each other. Communication and the ability to really talk things through and see the other person's point of view is one of the most fundamental foundational parts of a relationship and if you don't have that with each other then you do not stand a chance and the fact that he recognizes this but is still actively moving forward with the relationship in the last episode when they're on the couch trying to make up from yet another argument he makes a comment saying 99% of our relationship is great, but it's that 1% that we don't have or that 1% that isn't so great that I find concerning. Peter. 1%? 1%. Let's just go with this. Let's just say that every other aspect of their relationship other than their communication with one another was great. It, it's obviously not, but let's just say that that's the case. Everything is awesome except for their communication skills and their ability to understand one another. You really think that that is worth just 1%? Oh my goodness, Lord. That just shows a huge immaturity on his behalf to categorize communication skills as just 1%. Communication skills are worth a lot more than 1%. They're probably closer to 99% than they are to 1%. I'll give you the tip. Lord, oh, I just noticed my cat. Is he not just the absolute most beautifulest little angel you've ever seen on your entire life? I just want to squish him. Oh, I'm so obsessed with him, it's ridiculous. Anyway, every single conversation between Peter and Victoria seems to escalate into an argument. When Peter confronted Victoria regarding the information that his ex-girlfriend Marissa had told him in the last episode, her immediate reaction was to become defensive. Instead of actually talking through the issue and reaching some type of understanding, Peter has to spend the entire rest of that interaction and that evening talking Victoria down off a ledge, which we've seen happen over and over and over again. She has no interest in actually hearing him out and then responding accordingly. In other words, she has no interest in having a conversation. I mean, f listening to your partner and actually hearing what they have to say and talking it through, right? F that. And worse, Victoria takes it one step further and mocks him during this argument. She mocks him. She says something super combative to which he responds with, excuse me? And she goes, excuse you what? Excuse you what? Oh, oh my God. I have no words. It seems like Victoria's go-to strategy when she's being questioned is to tear the other person down, which is a really dangerous dynamic and can very quickly go into the abusive kind of realm. Mind you, these two literally have no other obstacles right now, with the exception of other women still being in the picture. But other than that, they're in this little TV bubble. They have absolutely no real world issues or distractions going on. And if she's gonna act like that with cameras around, imagine if they actually got out into the real world together. Imagine the arguments in the privacy of their own home behind closed doors. Oof, no thank you, no thank you, not for me. Mm -mm. Communication skills are everything, sis, they're everything. And if you don't have the ability to resolve and talk through conflict without things getting nasty and heated every single time, then there's not a lot of hope there.
Number five that made my list is emotional manipulation and gaslighting. We saw this big time in the hometown episode. Towards the end of their argument outside of her parents' place, she says, I like literally adore you. I was gonna tell you that I was falling in love with you tonight. In other words, I was going to give you something that you really wanted from me, but now I'm not going to because of what you did. She is using something really important to Peter, which is the knowledge and the security of knowing that the other women are falling for him and are invested in him. She's using that and she's dangling it, right? She's using it to flip the narrative and get what she wants out of this conversation. And more importantly, into the more gaslighting side of things. She's using it as ammunition to make him question himself and whether or not he was in the right in bringing this, this issue to her attention in the first place. She knows full well that saying something like this to him is gonna make him feel really guilty. She was very calculated and intentional with this one. She's essentially saying, I was falling for you. But now look what you've done. Look what you've done to this woman that was falling for you. Don't you feel bad for doing this to this woman that was falling for you, Peter? I had such high hopes for tonight. I was so excited. But now look what you've done. And as per usual, here come the tears. She starts crying. And sure enough, he embraces her and she knew this was going to happen because she knows full well that he is very moved by displays of emotion and crying. She uses that to her advantage and to manipulate the situation. Victoria, I've got to hand it to you, girl. Got to hand it to you. You're good. You're a snake, but you're good. All right, I'm gonna wrap this one up because I feel myself slowly fading and dying and I just want to climb into my bed with my cat for the rest of the day, which is exactly what I'm going to do. But I wanna know what you guys think. Is there any other Batchy fans out there that have been watching this train wreck of a relationship like I have? I wanna know what kind of dynamics you've maybe picked up watching these two that I've missed or if watching them has brought any type of clarity to your own life, whether it be in past relationships or current relationships, and that maybe you're recognizing some of these toxic interactions and saying, oh gosh, I, yeah, been there. If you liked this video as usual, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. And like I said, please subscribe and also click that notification bell down below so you can be notified every single time I post. Until next time, see you then guys.